Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Damala Nawal, and I'm going to be your facilitator for today. And um, today we're going to be talking about um, record keeping, improving your business. As entrepreneurs, we're always looking for ways to improve our businesses, and there are various ways to do it, but record keeping is one of the very important ways in which as entrepreneurs you can ensure that your business keeps improving. Go on. Can I just, um, can we just introduce ourselves briefly? Um, just tell me your name, your name and your favorite food. Yeah, um, I'm Eric Bapriste. Favorite food, I am my children's rice. I am Michael. Yeah, so I don't mean favorite food is Michael. Hmm. Where are you from? I'm Gabriel Justina. My favorite food is fried rice. I like fried rice. I'm going to go to the restaurant. The product is actually really good. I know what they call it. I don't know. There's rice and beans. They plant it. I'm Victoria Swanele. My favorite food is um, spaghetti. I'm going to go to my favorite food is fried rice. Fried rice. Okay, so we have a lot of people that like rice. I like rice. I like fried rice. Okay, so that's just as a means of, you know, breaking the ice. So the objectives for this um, class would be that at the end of the class, we would expect that we will be able to benefit. We would clearly explain what the benefits of record keeping would be to your business. As entrepreneurs, you will also be able to determine which records are important and which records you should keep. You would then be able to demonstrate the use of some simple bookkeeping tools, as well as describe the use of business records to improve your business. Just um, an outline, keeping your business records, a simple system of bookkeeping records, and then the use of records to improve your business. So um, we'll just do a brief class activity, and you can just tell us what you do. So as a business, if you receive money from a customer in the course of your daily activity, how do you record that transaction? Um, we, we have the cash register. Okay. So the amount collected from both the time of collection. So. That's basically what they do after receiving money. Okay. Then, well, you want me to stop? Go on. Okay. So, at the end of the day, we will take the money and lodge it in the banking facilities. Okay. So, beyond the cash register, is there any other um, document you think we can keep for a cash transaction? Receipt. 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 Mm -hmm. So, you have to keep a receipt. One. Usually the receipt is maybe duplicates, usually at least. So you give one to the customer who paid you and then you have one for your records. If you make a payment during the course of your business activities, how do you record that? And we have a um, cash book. That is where we will record the expenses. And there's a place where we record the Okay. When you sell on credit, how do you keep record of your sales that you sell that you do on credit? As much as possible, we discourage. <laughs> <laughs> as much as possible, but sometimes you can't escape. I know, journey. I know, right? Sometimes you can't. If we if we do that, then we also notice, but that would be for our valued and trusted customers. Okay, you okay. don't do no, it for just not just for everybody. And when you buy on credit and you're owing your suppliers, how do you keep that record? Go on, you can open the thumb thumb. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. So when you buy on credit. The supplier is giving you your raw materials on credit and telling you to pay at a later date. How do you keep that record? Uh, the, for the buying on credit? Buying on credit, yes. 
<laughs> Somebody else can. Just go ahead. There's no right or wrong answer. But if we buy a credit, yes. um, we try to be sure that we don't mix it with our um, asset, you know, because we have a, a separate place where we record that, okay. so that we know that it, it's not our own property, particularly. Okay. And then when you have an agreement with your supplier, you come to an agreement with your supplier, that's okay, when you supply me raw materials, I will pay you after 30 days. What, how do you ensure that you have, what, when you come to an agreement, what kind of documents should you have? A written contract. Exactly. Signed between exactly. On the all pages of it. Legally binding. Legally binding. Legally binding and clearly stating what the terms and conditions are. Signed by both parties so that there is no ambiguity and there is no misunderstanding during the course of your business operations. So, so this is the first part now where we're going to talk basically about keeping your business records. It's out. I mean, there is no way you can monitor your costs. These are each items that would eventually affect the profitability of your business at the end of any given period. The only way you can know if you're actually making profits or if you're making a loss, you know, is by keeping adequate records of all your transactions. How much you sold on credit, because you want to keep a tab on people who are owing you. You don't want to wake up one morning and find out that you know you've lost. You can't even remember who is owing you or how much the person is owing you. And if you don't keep proper records, you can even find out that they you would have disagreements between you and some of your um, debtors. And the only way to avoid that is to ensure that you have a record that is up to date. And then the issue of um, agreements between, like we already mentioned, when you come to an agreement with your supplier, it's very important for you to have a, an agreement, a contract, an SLA, detailing everything that um, every term and condition that you and your supplier have agreed upon. Writing is key. Writing, writing, writing. You can't write too much. And, you know, writing ensures that you don't forget. Sometimes you have make a mental note and say, oh, I'll write. And when I get back to my office, I'll write it down. But writing, and nowadays we all have smartphones. You can take notes of every transaction as you're doing it. If you're in the car and you buy a newspaper for the office, you take, you keep, you know, you take a note of that transaction so that when you get back to your office, you can put your your records in order as it were. So we're going to quickly do a, a an activity now. Um, I'm going to read something to you. So like it says here, it's a memory test. It's going to test how sharp our memory is. Um, it's a day in my business activity. I'm going to read what happened in a typical day in my business. And at the end of the of the description, I'm going to just ask you two questions. And then we'll see how many of us are able to get the correct answer. A day in my business. I run a small business which provides laundry services. I hope we're you can take notes, you can write down the important that's the essence of the test. So I run a small business which provides laundry services. Though I have three staff members, I am always needed to work. This is an example of a typical daily schedule. Yesterday, I came to the office at 8.30 a.m. in the morning. I spent an hour checking all the orders that were due that day and reminded the staff to make sure the orders were ready to deliver. Next, I met with a member of staff and asked her that she clear her advance from the previous day. She gave me some invoices and $17. The same amount on the invoices. The total amount on the invoices was $67. She had advanced only $50, but she had also received 
a payment of $34 from a customer. I put, in the, I put money in my cash box, which contained $335. Are we following? Or am I too fast? I should slow down. Okay. Then there were some issues that I needed to solve. A customer dropped in and claimed that he had left a $50 note in his jeans pocket the day before. But my staff assured me that they had not seen any money. Also, one of my staff had reported that a regular customer disagreed about the amount she owed. All these activities took nearly three hours. I then left the office at 11.30 for a business lunch with a potential customer. In the afternoon, I visited four of our credit customers to collect the amounts they owed for previous services. The first two customers made their payments quickly. However, the third customer made me wait for half an hour. And then he made up the excuse that the boss was in an important meeting. I went, the fourth customer paid only half of what he owed. I had expected to collect $450, but collected only $297. On my way back to the office, I stopped at the businesses of two suppliers and made payments of $139 in total. I went back to the office at 4.30 and spent half an hour checking the operation. At five, my cashier reported that the amount of cash from sales she had collected during the day was $287. We closed at 5.30, but I stayed until 7 o'clock to check all the receipts and invoices and to take care of some other matters. So the question is, how much cash did the business bring in that day? Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> how much cash did cash. the business bring bring in that day, that particular day. Very good, very good, very good. So the second question, how much cash did the business have at the end of that day? The first question was how much came in that day. This question is how much do they have at the end of the day? That day. Mm -hmm. so That's the cash that came in that day. It was 287. Yes. So how much cash did business have by the end of that day? It was Three thirty-five oh. in the cash box. Yes. Yeah. 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 The cash book co contained three hundred and um, thirty-five. Mm -hmm. And you can also two. Let's add yes, three thirty-seven. No, three thirty-five plus yes. the two eighty-seven. That's what. That's sixty-two. And he passed somewhere else to collect mm -hmm. yes. six to two. Six to two. He collected one thirty nine dollars. He made payment, payment of, of one thirty mm -hmm. ninety seven. She collected two ninety seven, yes. and then she made it to tap. Now let's take it one at a time. If we go from the beginning, you can see that she gave some invoices. She collected seventeen dollars. And then in the 
cash box, they had three, 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 five. write everything where it should go as if you don't keep the accurate record as it should be it's very easy for you to forget to forget it's very easy for you to forget it's very easy for you to make mistakes if you don't keep your records as I went to so which is basically the essence of, of that exercise so we already talked about some of the benefits of record keeping. So it helps to control your cost. Yes, it helps you to control your cost. Um, cash. Yes, because cash is king. And you know cash is the lifeline of any business, as it were. Mm. If you don't have cash, that means you can't pay your salaries when they are due. You can't miss your own obligations also to your to your creditors. And your suppliers and people who have also given you um, credit lines. If you need cash to also be able to pay your bank, if you are taking a loan from the bank, so you must have, you must be able to monitor your cash, your cash flow at every point in time. It will show you and others how your business is performing. So, for instance, if you want to take a loan from the bank. These are some of the records that the banks will typically ask from you. And that's why usually we encourage businesses, no matter how small your business is, please use your, um, let as much of your transactions as possible actually go through your bank account because it gives you a track record. People can, they, anybody can easily call up your account and see they, at a glance they can tell how much turnover your business can do. They can actually analyze your cash flow. They can you know, tell you how much the bank is able to, the bank will be able to, I mean, avail you as a loan from that information. So it's very important. And then cost as well, because you have to, if you don't keep tabs on your cost, you will find out that a lot, you may be making so much money and then that cost element is just eroding, um, eroding all your profits as it were. And you also have to plan for the future. So when you have adequate records, you can see where you are. When we have adequate records, you can see where you are, and you can also plan for the future. It helps you to project. If you have a target, or you set a target for yourself, and you keep proper records, when you review those records, you can easily tell if you are meeting your target. You can actually tell where the problems are coming from, and it can help you to take necessary corrective actions and you can also it also helps you to plan for the future because you can then benchmark where you are and where you would like to be in the, in the nearest future. I think we can also use it to check fraud. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. You can also use it to check fraud. That I mean it, it helps you to keep tabs on, on everything. everything that is going on in your business because you won't be there all the time. You have different people performing different roles mm -hmm. and responsible for different activities in your business. So by keeping records and checking your records, you can tell at a very early age stage if something you know mm -hmm. fishy or dodgy is actually going on in that business. Any other any other benefits that you you can Okay, so now we have some important business 
church records that we have to keep. Cash transactions, you have to keep records of your cash transactions. We mentioned that before. The details of your debtors, record of your sales, your costs, your bank transactions, your agreements with your suppliers and your customers, and you know there are several others. So we're just looking at some of the documents that you will use now to keep such records. We touched on that briefly before. So if you if you are paid cash. You already mentioned that you write a receipt Sorry. when you receive your when you receive cash for a transaction, and then when you also pay, you should ask for a receipt or an invoice from whoever you're buying from. If you are also supposed to make payments or you have other business activities in your business that are not cash, you should also make a voucher of that transaction for yourself. You need to keep all your vouchers in a safe place. There's no point keeping records, and then when you need them, you cannot find them or you can't call them up. You can have them on your computer system or you can have them as hard copies. And it's always good to have a a backup. Yes, you can you know duplicate so that even if one source is corrupted or lost, you can always have a backup. You don't have to start afresh. So you can keep your vouchers, let them have, usually they come with serial numbers and they're yeah. usually in triplicates. And then you file them in a consecutive number. And if this is an example of a daily cash That's sales good. record for a retail or wholesale business. And you have details of your, of the products you are selling, the, the quantity sold. Your net price, that's the price per, per item, or the unit cost. Sometimes you may see unit cost instead of net price. And then the VAT, if there's any VAT or tax applicable. And then you can just calculate how much your total sales, the, the VAT, and then your total amount. And you make sure that you do that for every, oh, you know, daily. all your daily uh, sales or all your daily transactions. Okay, so this is also a basic record book that you keep. Keeps records of, in this case, both your, sorry, cash and um, bank transactions. In this case, you can see the balance brought forward, which is probably balance brought forward from previous months, or re yes, the record from the previous period. And then we can see that this person bought some timber and you can see that every transaction has its own voucher number and it's in a serial um, manner. So you can also do your reconciliation easily. How much cash was spent? 280 to buy the timber and then the balance. You take the 280 out of the 380 and you know how much you have left. And then there's sales and sales. Also, and in the case of sales, you can see here now that it's cash coming in. There's no cash going out. Uh, and um, bought vanish, probably to polish the timber, or after um, they finished probably manufacturing the seat or the chair or the sofa. This is cash out. And then sales also. So at the end of each period, typically people keep records maybe monthly. But it's, it's not cast in school. It can depend on the kind of business that you are, that you are running. And also the same thing goes for your bank records. This is the balance put forward. And there was um, sales of 2,400. You have your, also your other associated costs, your material costs, these are your production costs. So at a glance, you can actually see what, you know, this is like a summary of what is happening in your business for this period. Um, so, if you are, I mean, if you are into production, the types of costs that you'll be keeping records of is your production costs. That those are costs that are directly 
related to your business activity as it were. So like in what we just saw, the material cost then probably be buying the timber. The labor cost to be for those who are probably you know, slicing and polishing and doing all those things. And then you have your overhead costs. Those are your costs that are not directly tied to your business activities. Probably your salaries for your receptionist or the dispatch person, the dis transportation, your cost of petrol, diesel, buying diesel for your generator. Those are items that would ordinarily come under your overhead expenses. Yeah. So. Uh, Let's just go ahead so that we won't take too much of our time. And you know, if you don't want to be so that we won't be COVID compliant, we need to doing so many activities that require us moving around. So, this is an example of um, an invoice. The invoice clearly showing some tech. This is, you are telling this person. This person is your supplier, and you are saying, I mean, this is your business, yeah, some yeah. tech, rather. And you are telling this person, more than one in that he should su supply. No, no, no. This yeah. is modern furniture. Modern furniture is us. Modern furniture is us. This is our supplier, some tech. Some tech is supplying us a desktop computer. Okay. And on this invoice, you can see that there's a number. There's an invoice number, it's dated, it has a quantity and the specifications of what you're buying, the total cost, unit costs, and the other freight costs. So when this person has eventually supplied you, typically you there will be a, a portion on the voucher where he will also sign off that he has received payment, you will keep a copy. He will have a copy, and he will probably keep a copy for your own internal um, reconciliation. So this is a, an example, simple example of your assets register. Because if you have a business, if you are running a business, you probably might have bought your computers, maybe your sewing machine if you are into um, fashion. Um, so if you have a sewing machine, for example, you have to have an idea of how many years typically that you can use that item for because you must depreciate your um, fixed assets as um, because their value depreciates yearly as you use them so that you have a true value of what your assets are. So every asset should be listed in your asset register and they should all have serial numbers. I'm sure you would have noticed, even if you go to some offices generally, if you see their, their receipts, even if you go to an office, you may see on their laptop that they have serial yeah, numbers on the seats. So yeah. when you get it, those are assets that they are keeping record, record of. Yes. And then you keep record, you can see here um, what year you it was bought, how many years you intend to use it for, uh, and then so the cost of purchase and how much depreciation you're going to be deducting per year. So typically you just divide the cost by the number of years to give you your depreciation per year and then you have to make that provision for the depreciation in your other record. But this is just for you to see an idea of how, uh, how we're going to proceed. Then customer's account records. We, mentioned, we, mentioned, we talked about records of your credit sales. So here you can see that this person has a credit limit of 800, you can see. So at any point in time, you can't say, this man cannot have, he can't owe you more than 800. He's not supposed to owe you more than $800 or Naira at any point in time. So with this helps you to keep track. You know, at this point now, you, we've gone to meet him to say, okay, please you. You are owing us this 800 naira. We've reached your limit, please. And then he had made some payment. With this payment means that now he can also you can still sell, you know, more items to him on credit, as long as you are operating within the agreed 
credit limit. So other useful records that you can keep, your salary register so that you know what you're paying who. This is important because everybody may not collect their salary at the same time, depending on the kind of jobs they're doing. Your dispatch rider, you may outsource people who come into your factory when you have a lot of work to do. So you keep records of what you are paying um, people at different times. Detailed costs records. You keep records of your costs, your inventory. Your inventory is your stock because that is also your money as it were. That's your cash. So your inventory is very important. Your records of your loans. We mentioned creditors, also your tax payable record. So if you are supposed to pay, if you are owing the government or you are supposed to remit tax at the end of the year, it's very important for you to keep such records. And then we mentioned you can keep them either paper based. Paper based is usually simple. Everybody can easily do that. And it works well for small and simple businesses. And you can also use a computer. Computers benefits is that it's easy for you to correct and you can quickly find information. your information exactly. You can easily update and you can automate your calculations. You don't have to do them manually. So these are just um, you know how you keep your records and with that we come to the end of this session. Anybody has any comments, question before we say goodbye? Okay. So, I your receipt is for cash. You issue a receipt for cash that has you have received cash that.